This is Blue Submarine 06, Time and Tide for the Dreamcast. Right off the bat, I gotta say, this is based off a of manga and an anime. And no, I haven't read the manga or watched the anime. Although, I'm very tempted to after playing this game. This game was originally for Japanese audiences only, and as far as I can tell it was never going to be brought over to the English-speaking parts of the world. But that didn't stop a few dedicated fans from translating the game, albeit with some mixed results here and there. Right off the bat, this game starts with a cutscene. It just kind of seems to pick up in the middle of something. I assume this is picking up from the anime. I don't know, I'm kind of left out of the blue here. Right after the cutscene, you'll see this. This is your home. You can do a few things here, but for now I'm just gonna save. Now I did skip a good portion of the cutscene. A lot of it is just shots of the city you live in. I can't show all that. But towards the end of the cutscene you're told to visit this guy's father. I'll go over who he is here soon, trust me. But for now, let's go see his dad. To see his dad, you'll have to exit your house and look at this map. There's a lot of places here, but for now we just want to go to Zhang's house. The first thing you're gonna do after the cutscene is talk to this guy. He will invite you to join the East Guild. I'll go over what that is later. For now, it's just a setup for the tutorial mission. If you head home after this, you can see a cutscene. Here, you can see the translation in action. This guy. Let's take him into the warehouse, quick. Hey. That dog, I'll be taking it. These real-time 3D cutscenes use text-to-speech. It's a pretty common thing to do for translations. However, these 2D anime cutscenes use subtitles instead of text-to-speech. I prefer the subtitles, but that just can't always be implemented. In this cutscene, you meet two new characters. This dog, which you buy from these boys, who I assume we're going to eat it. People must be desperate for food here, I guess. Then there's Lan Fang. She's just a little girl, but her objective just seems to be to annoy you and be rude to you. One of the first things she tells you is that your house sucks. There's also Yoon Jin, who works on your submarine. He also pilots the mothership and keeps track of missions for you. Then there's the guy you play as, Hayami. He doesn't really say much. As you play the game, you'll be introduced to more people, but for now, let's move on to the tutorial. Don't worry, I'll speed through it. At the bottom right of your screen is your sonar. There's two types, always on and manual. Always on means, well, just that, it's always on. Having your sonar always on can attract unwanted attention. It also drains your battery of your submarine, so it's best just to keep this to manual. You can also look around your submarine. The cockpit is made of glass, so you can look in every direction except directly behind you. This is good for just taking a look around you to see what's going on. I use it to make sure I don't crash into stuff. You also have weapons on your submarine. It's not always safe down here. That's why you have a needle gun and torpedoes, if you can afford them. The reason you are down here is to get treasure. Treasure can be anything from a tricycle to literal gold bars. It depends on the job you take and what you just find laying around on the sea floor. There's two ways of picking this stuff up. The first way is to just float over and pick it up with your sub. This can only be done with smaller objects. However, if an object is too large, you'll have to use floats. These are like sticky torpedoes that inflate after you hit something with it. You gotta watch your aim though. You buy your own ammo in this game, and it's not cheap. The torpedoes that I'm using here go for about 300 each. That's pretty much it for gameplay. When you're done with that area, you can just head back to your mothership. It's always marked with a white arrow on your sonar. After that, the game just tells you how to sell stuff at the shop. This is really straightforward and you don't need me to tell you how to do it. While we're here in the shop, I want to mention something interesting. This game has DLC. A few games on the Dreamcast had DLC. And this was one of them. The DLC isn't anything really interesting. Just some new items added to the shop. Nothing mind-blowing, but still kind of interesting. That's pretty much it for the tutorial. Starting out, it's kind of a simple game, but as you go on, you get more complex missions that require you to do more stuff. And speaking of missions, you can now take them whenever you want, or don't. It's kind of up to you if you take the missions or not. 
You can always freelance it and just see what you find on your own, but you will eventually have to take a mission if you want to progress the story and unlock new areas to explore, but you can do it at your own pace. Now while I was down there doing the tutorial in the ocean, you might have noticed some weird scenery, like suburban houses and cars on the bottom of the ocean. From what limited knowledge I have, Blue Submarine, at least the anime, is a post-apocalyptic anime. A post-apocalyptic, submarine-based anime. And that, of course, transfers over to the game. The game actually takes place near the former capital of Singapore, which you can actually visit in your submarine. It's, it's underwater. It's kind of a cramped and scary map, too. Literally anything can be behind these buildings, like giant crabs or... Whatever this thing is. The music in this area also doesn't help, it's very creepy. The music in this game is great. I love this game's music, man. Earlier in the video, I mentioned the translation, so most of the time, it's pretty good. I didn't see a whole lot of spelling mistakes, but I'm the last guy you should be asking to check for that. You should see this script. Every individual word is usually spelled correctly. However, the sentence they form can sometimes just not even make any sense. Take a look at this. I had to reread this a couple of times. Thankfully, this seems to be the worst one. There are a few more, but they're not nearly as bad. And I only ever seem to encounter them randomly while talking to people in the city. So the main storyline should be fine from these errors. At least from what I've seen. It's also possible that I have a really early version of the translation. I have had the files for this just sitting on my desktop for about a year now, so it's a very good possibility. I also noticed a bug with the save system, as it doesn't track the right time. I have more than 4 hours of footage of this game, that much is for sure. Now the only serious problem is the translation. The save clock thing doesn't even matter, I don't, I don't even care about that. It was just a bug to bring up. Let's go back to some of the more positive stuff I like about this. Well, it's very calming. Sure, there are points where it gets kinda heated and you have to shoot some stuff, but most of the time it's actually pretty calm. It's strange, I'm actually kinda terrified of the ocean. Kinda weird that I find this game calming. I also love the atmosphere in this game. I love the submarine. I just kind of love everything about this game. It's insanely unique and niche, so there's nothing really like it out there. Sure, there's submarine video games, but nothing quite like Blue Submarine. The more you play the game, the more it gets unlocked, too. You'll eventually start to see things like shipping containers you can pick up and <laughs> even boss fights. The boss fights are certainly a change in pace, that's for sure. All I have left to really say is that I really think you should play this game. Sure, sometimes it can be a little rough around the edges, but overall it's a fantastic game. However, getting your hands on a copy might be a little difficult. This is one of the more expensive Dreamcast games. The lowest I've seen it go for is about $90 on eBay, and the highest is around $200. Keep in mind it's not going to be translated if you get it that way, so you better know Japanese or be willing to mess with the files. There is, of course, another way of getting it. Can't really talk about that here, but that way is usually translated already. If you couldn't tell, I 100% recommend this game. It's up there on the list of my favorite Dreamcast games now. Maybe I'll talk about that list some other time. But for now, if you liked the video, I'd appreciate it if you left a like. If you like to see obscure and forgotten video games, subscribe, that's kinda all I do. And if you know of any obscure or forgotten video games, please leave a comment. I'd love to check them out. But for now, I'll see you in the next one.